Michigan. It's not the first state to come to mind when you think of epic road trips. But the Upper Peninsula, which lies north of Michigan's mid, is home to incredible geologic features, crystal clear turquoise water, countless waterfalls, and untamed wilderness, making it an RVer's paradise. The Upper Peninsula, or UP for short, lies on three of the five Great Lakes, Lake Huron, Lake Michigan, and Lake Superior, giving it 1,700 miles of shoreline. With less than 325,000 people living here year-round and just under 85% of it being covered in forest, it's a rural and remote getaway where travelers can unplug and enjoy nature. We had very few expectations coming into this road trip, but after four weeks of exploring, it's safe to say Michigan's UP blew us away. Over the next 50 minutes, we'll be sharing tips on how to RV the UP, including must-see destinations and activities, Whoa. and things to know and prepare for to help you take your own trip to Northern Michigan and see for yourself what makes this place so special. We're Liz and Dennis, and you're watching Eat CRV. There are two ways to get to Michigan's UP by RV, through Wisconsin on the west, or by the Mackinac Bridge from the Lower Peninsula of Michigan. Our road trip started from the south, taking the five mile long Mackinac Bridge, which costs $5 per axle to cross, where we made it to our first destination, St. Ignace State Park, one of the closest state parks to the famous Mackinac Island. We made it to Mackinac Island, the number one most recommended place for us to visit from everyone when we said we were coming to RV Michigan. And I will tell you what, just after a few minutes of being here, I get it. It is so charming, absolutely beautiful. All of the old historic homes right over the lake with the manicured lawns and beautiful different flowers and gorgeous hotels, the Adirondack chairs on the big lawns to overlook the lake. I definitely get it, I do. Now, because there's no motorized vehicles allowed on the island, you have two choices for exploring. You can either rent a bike or you can take a horse and carriage ride. We opted to rent a bike. We're paying about $10 per hour for our bike. Normally, you'd be able to do an eight and a half mile loop around the island on the bikes. But unfortunately, today when we're visiting, half of the road is closed. So we're not gonna be able to show you all of the cool spots to enjoy along the way when you're coming here. Hopefully you'll have much more to explore than we are, but I still think it's gonna be an absolutely lovely day. It's not gonna be a cheap day. Getting here is expensive. I think we paid $63 just to get the ferry to come over here for the two of us, but it will be a lovely day. The watercolor here never ceases to amaze me. It is crystal clear, it's like the Caribbean. Who knew? arch is super cool. Lake Huron is just next level with its colors. It is insane. I had no idea to expect colors like this from the Great Lakes, but be prepared for crowds. There's so many people everywhere. The first European settlement on Mackinac Island dates back to the late 1600s. Over the centuries, the island played an important role in fishing, fur trade, and military protection during the Revolutionary War and the War of 1812. Today, less than 600 people live here year-round, 
but many people still come to stay for summer in some of the island's gorgeous Victorian mansions, which date back to the 1800s. So if you're looking for the history side of Mackinac Island, I definitely suggest taking a horse and carriage ride. The tours include kind of like a history as you do one of the routes around part of the island. Most of Mackinac's nearly 1 million annual visitors will bike past beautiful scenes of horse-drawn carriages and fuzz shops, completely unaware of the island's deep connection with Native American history and culture. But if you look closely along the eight-mile bike path circling Mackinac Island, you'll find the Native American Cultural History Trail. The six interpretive panels illustrate Anishinaabek history with the island, spanning back centuries and up to this very day. For the Anishinaabek, the island is more than just a military fort or trading outpost, and has been a ceremonial gathering place for centuries. The original name of Mackinac Island is Michili Mackinac, meaning Great Turtle in the Anishinaabek language and is believed to be the origin of the world as well as a sacred burial ground of ancient ancestors. Its central location with the Great Lakes has made contests for the island high. Various tribes, the French, British, and Americans have all fought for control in pivotal wars throughout modern history. The present-day Anishinaabek generation still holds their powerful connection to Michili Mackinac, despite the attempts of removal from their homelands and forced assimilation in boarding schools designed to erase their culture. bike riding I'll tell you what it works up an appetite we were ravenous and so we ended up grabbing a very late lunch early dinner at Kingston Kitchen at the Village Inn it is American Jamaican food there's actually a lot of Jamaicans that come here and work here seasonally so if you're looking for something outside of just the standard American fare which it seems like a lot of the restaurants here serve there's lots of burgers and fries on the menu uh, this is kind of like a little hidden gem off the beaten path now we're gonna walk through the downtown and see what all the shops are about. Yeah. There's a lot of people here. We heard this was a very touristy destination. Of course, it's summer, peak season. Beautiful day. You couldn't ask for a better day. But there's a lot of people here. The horse stench is is real. So strong. The smell is a little uh, noticeable. Right now it smells good because we just walked past a fudge shop. There's so many fudge shops here. If you're a fudge fan, you're in for a treat. Almost six million dollars for this home built in 1888. This is gorgeous Victorian. It's really cool looking inside. 8,000 square feet. Anyone got six mil? Nah, I don't think I would want to live here. After a long day on the island, I think we're both ready to go home. I'm done. I'm spent. So we spent about eight hours here, and honestly, it should have been broken up over two days. If you have a chance to stay overnight at a hotel, I highly recommend it just so you're not trying to do so much in one day. A great option for camping in the UP is any of the dispersed or established campgrounds in the National Forest System. On our way north, we stopped at the Bayview Campground, which offers camping spots on a reservation or first come, first serve basis. We arrived 3 p.m. on a Friday with no reservations and was able to snag the last first come, first serve spot at the campground, which is located directly on Lake Superior. Nightly rates at the time we were there were $18 with no services except for a hand pump for fresh water and a vault toilet. But it was a peaceful, quiet retreat and one of our favorite camping spots of the entire trip. Welcome to Tequamanon Falls. 
This is one of the state parks that was highly recommended for RVing in the UP and we're really excited to explore it today. We were lucky enough to snag a cancellation for two nights back to back here. It was one of those things we kept checking frequently. I will say our spot is less than ideal. It's probably the most unlevel spot I think we have ever attempted to stay in. Somehow Dennis got it level, I'm like so impressed. But today we're going to be exploring both the lower and upper falls here, starting with the nature hike between the two, which is about four and a half miles. I think it's nine and a half miles round trip if you were to go out and back. But thankfully there's a shuttle service that picks you up from either of the falls to take you back to the other side. Our site backs up directly to the trail that we're going to be taking today, so we don't have to walk far to get started. Okay, so we're at 15. 16 it says to drive. the right, we need and to then we would go to 13. Go. Map skills are not our strong suit. Dennis is definitely much better than me, but I'm pretty hopeless when it comes to map reading. But I think we figured it out. We're going to 16. Wow, these falls are super impressive. I wasn't expecting them to be as grand as they are. It's like this deep rust color, the water. We're at the lower falls, which has about five different waterfalls cascading into an area. There's people on the other side on a different trail that are like swimming in the river. If you get close to the falls, you can actually feel the mist on your face. It's pretty cool. Tucked between the two waterfalls is an island. You can only get there by canoe. If you'd like to explore the island, kind of swim around in the lower falls or the upper falls, and just get a different vantage point, you can rent a canoe from the lower falls area. We are not going to do that today. We didn't actually know it was an option, although I would have loved that. But now you know. Once you get past the madness that's close to the lower falls, it's so tranquil and peaceful on this walk. We've passed several people, but most are moving very quickly on a mission. And we're really just taking our time, walking slowly, observing everything that's around us. There's so much beauty on this trail. We came to a patch that has like a river running through it. And we saw so many different types of flowers and bees, crazy looking moths seen caterpillars. It's just teeming with life. When you actually take time to pause and notice things around you, I feel like nature honestly gives you little gifts, a reward for being present with it. So on your next hike, or your next walk, whenever you're outside, just take some time to be. Just be around. Not thinking about what you have going on later, not talking with your friends or family about what's going on next. Just kind of taking in the quietness and connecting with nature. Chances are it'll be a very fulfilling rejuvenating experience. I'm loving this. I'm also really hoping that nature might reward us with a beaver or an otter. Both of them live here in the river. That would be so cool. We've seen evidence of beavers. There's spots where trees have definitely had bark eaten. The little beaver going <sniffs> This would be so cool if we could see one. We made it! And the upper falls are just as impressive as the lower falls. Very different, but beautiful. And on this side, near the upper falls, they have outdoor shopping, they have several little food trucks and food stalls, and then there's a brewery and a brew pub, which is wild. I'm not used to seeing that in a state park. So I think we're gonna enjoy the view here and grab a beer. This is beautiful, but I don't wanna do all these steps going back up there. But beer awaits. <laughs> This is a beautiful hike, man. This is definitely worth doing. Even from the lower falls, 
to the upper falls now that i've done one way i'm not sure i would actually want to do Round out trip. and back that's a little too much the shuttle is going to be a welcome welcome thing right yeah if you're not physically able to do all of the hikes you can take a shuttle or drive to each destination there's parking lots as well but no matter oh, what yeah. come here view the falls get out into nature it's a beautiful park Long day. I'm tired. Ready to relax. Apparently, we messed up when we decided not to go to Sault Ste. Marie. We were like, eh, we've seen the Great Lakes locks before, so we don't need to see those again. Well, Sault Ste. Marie was the only town close to us right now that had like a grocery store with organic choices. So we stopped at a food pantry here in this town next to uh, Taquamanon Falls. And it wasn't much, it was a bunch of sausage and some cheese and like sodas. Like literally that was it. And then like camping gear. So long story long, we're out of food for breakfast. So we're frying up the quarter of a head of cabbage we have left. We have four quail eggs, which equals one regular hen chicken egg, uh, and some bacon. And then we gotta get the heck out of here and go to the grocery store so we can actually get more food so we don't starve to death in the UP. Yesterday we drove about an hour and 45 minutes to, from Tequamanon Falls. We stopped and went to another grocery store that was another disappointing stopover. <laughs> Hey, we got what we needed for dinner last night and we're actually staying in a beautiful campground. It's right on the lake. It's unfortunate we're just staying one night because we have plans that we need to get to in our next destination. But we came here specifically so that we could explore a very special place in the UP called Kitch Itty Kippy. The reason walk here from Jaramedas RV Resort is because we have an annual pass for Michigan State Parks and Kitch Itty Kippy is a Michigan State Park so we can get in for free. If we were walked in, I don't think they would have let us in for free. So we brought our RV here, which is fine because we're leaving after this anyways. And I will tell you what, it is packed. It's packed. There's a huge line to be able to go out in the spring. I think it'll be worth it. This seems like a really cool experience, but I think we'll be here for a while. Kitchity Kippy is an Ojibwe word meaning the great water or blue sky I see. It's hard to believe that a logging camp was filling Kitchity Kippy with trash in the early 1920s before the land became a protected state park. The 300 foot wide, 40 foot deep spring flows around 10,000 gallons of crystal clear water per minute. Today, you can get an intimate view of Kitchity Kippy's impressive underwater features by boarding a cable-tethered, visitor-powered observation raft that floats the length of the bubbling emerald pool. Super beautiful. It does remind us very much of the Florida Springs. It's the same crystal clear color. So this water is 45 degrees year round instead of 72 like the Florida Springs, which is much colder. The light on the spring was just incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I love that you could see the spring head just pumping out all of that water and yeah, sand. That was rad. That was the, probably the biggest sand boil I've ever seen. And it wasn't too bad of a wait. We were in line for about an hour and 15 minutes, but I'd say even if you do have to wait, it's still very much worth it. You're coming here in an RV. There's no like bus or RV parking. So it's gonna be kind of tight, especially if you have a trailer. There is like a little gravel road where a uh, boat ramp is that has a turnaround that you can park on the road, but just food for thought before you drag your big trailer down here. What the hell? I know, the wind just picked up. Yeah, it's sandy, ugh. Yeah. All right, we're gonna catch you later. We have about an hour drive ahead of us for our next destination.
Welcome to Munising, Michigan. We have been very excited to get here. This is a very popular destination for people in the UP because it is home to Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, an incredible park that can be explored in a number of different ways. But our first way to explore, and probably the best way, is by water. So we have teamed up with Northern Waters Adventures to do a paddling tour of the lakeshore. I am next level excited to get out on Lake Superior and to see this place in all of its glory. The weather was absolutely insane yesterday. It's calmed down some, but it's still going to be a little bit of a rough day. So we'll see how today goes, but I'm excited. I give you a ton of gear so that you don't get wet. I'm really hoping we don't get wet because Lake Superior is super cold. I'm ready. This is tricky. Sandstone cliffs that line Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore date back 500 to 800 million years. As groundwater seeps out of the cracks, minerals like iron, copper, manganese, and limonite decorate the cliff walls, painting them with gorgeous hues of orange, black, blue, green, brown, red, and white. Harsh winds and rough waters of Lake Superior have shaped unique geological features into the shoreline, including sea caves, arches, turrets, and blowholes. In spring, Dozens of waterfalls flow over the cliff faces straight into the lake and are best seen by kayak from the water. On calm days, the water is crystal clear, allowing you to see straight to the bottom. In one area, you can even witness the remains of a shipwreck from the late 1800s. Unfortunately, when we visited, the water was too rough to see to the bottom, but the beautiful turquoise blue and green shades of the lake against the painted cliff walls lit by the evening sun was breathtaking. That was awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What a beautiful place. And it's so fun to be out on the water getting to see all of the different colors. You can take a boat tour if you prefer. If the weather's not great for kayaking, that is an option. But I definitely recommend kayaking or paddling. It's just such a cool, active way to get out on the water. And it was really, really fun. They made us feel safe the whole time, even with the waves being a little choppy. If you're coming here and you want to kayak or paddle, we definitely recommend booking a tour with Northern Waters Adventures. We'll have a link to the company in the description of the video below. What do you do after three hours of kayaking? You get a pasty. If you are not familiar with pasties, it is a total Northern Michigan thing. I actually think it extends beyond Michigan, but it's huge here in the UP. Upers love them. And Carl from Northern Waters Adventures told us that this is one of the best in all of the UP. And he says he's a little bit of a pasty connoisseur, so I'm gonna take his word for it. We got vegetarian ones, which are cauliflower, broccoli, potatoes, I believe onions, but the traditional one is filled with beef, potatoes, and other vegetables. So if you're eating meat, I definitely suggest going that route, but we chose the veggie, which is still gonna be great. Whoa. I was concerned that this wasn't gonna be enough food for dinner, but the lady's like, they weigh a pound, and I was like, okay, <laughs> this should be enough for dinner. really good. I'm sure I got the beef. It's like really good veggies wrapped in a nice flaky biscuit. They're kind of like handheld pot pie. All the yummy stuffings inside. Normally, it would be served in a plate and they put the gravy on top. I think they're very good. 
I'm not blown away, but I would give them another try. I think it'd be really fun to get like really creative with the fillings on the inside. I think they could do some real magic with that. If anyone has recommendations for must have pasties in the UP, put them in the comments below. Our explorations in Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore aren't over yet. Since we've already taken you with us to explore by water, now we're going to explore by land. We are about to embark on one of the longest hikes I think we've actually ever done in a day. This is the Mosquito Falls Chapel Loop hike. And it's supposed to be one of the most scenic and best ways to explore this beautiful area by land, but it's 11 miles. So it's a beast of a hike. I think it's supposed to be relatively flat and kind of moderate, easy hike, just a long one. So we're here pretty early. We're gonna get a move on it and try and take it all we can on this hike. It's 10.30, let's start. Waterfall one of two on this hike. How beautiful. Incredible. The sun is out, so the water is that bright blue color, but the wind is roaring. There's another craft advisory warning, and the, I mean, the waves are just crashing. And this is technically Chapel Arch because it used to once be an arch. Unfortunately, it fell, but now the root system has taken place of the rock. So it still makes an arch, it's just not a rock arch. Off the trail, there's a ton of side paths that you can take that, that walk you along the shoreline, kind of veer back to the main trail, but take all of them because the vistas from each one are so unique and just stunning. I think we found our spot where we're gonna have lunch. I was smart and planned ahead. I made some egg salad that we're gonna put in wraps. Enjoy this view because it is epic. I've never seen anything like this. clockwise on the trail. I definitely recommend it. I think it avoids going up a lot of steep grades. You end up going down a lot of the grades and you get 
all of the wow factor of the shoreline right away. So you're not fatigued and kind of like over it toward the end of the hike like we were. At the end of the path, just before the parking lot, there will be a fork in the road. If you're really tired, continue on. But if you have the gumption in you, we definitely recommend going to Mosquito Falls. We have 0.3 miles to get back. We are pooped. We made it. It's 6.30. We started at 10.30. It took us eight hours. But that's with us filming, stopping, enjoying, eating lunch for we don't know how long we took for lunch. It is a long hike. It is by far one of the most beautiful we've ever done yeah. and so worth it. For it's sure. not super strenuous, it's just long. If you can, by any means, we suggest trying it. Even if you just do part of the trail, this is well worth it. The path out here is bumpy and can be muddy if there's been rain, so just keep that in mind. And it's important to make sure you get here early because the parking lot does fill up and there's only a limited number of spots here. Like always, be a smart hiker, have lots of water, food and snacks, and it's a tip to bring toilet paper for this one when it's such a long hike. You're gonna need a bathroom break, so we bring a little bag and kind of can tuck everything away so we're not littering. So we are gonna catch you tomorrow. As we're heading out of Munising, we wanted to share with you where we're camping. We ended up finding a spot at the Munising Tourist Park, which is a city-run park right on the water. It's pretty epic, actually. It is very much like an RV park where you are very close to your neighbors. There's not much privacy. You can hear all the conversations, all the dogs barking, but it's really close to the National Park. You're right in the center of town from Munising, so it's kind of a good spot spot to explore. If you're coming here, I suggest booking online. They do take reservations. If not, check for cancellations and they do have an overflow parking area. If they're totally booked up, that can be a good last resort. But the point is to get here to Pictured Rocks because it is just epic. This is by far one of our favorite national parks. It literally just jumped right up to the list in the top five for sure. This was such an incredible experience and it absolutely is not to be missed. So if you're coming to Michigan, this should be number one on your Michigan bucket list. We're gonna be heading an hour north today to Marquette. We made it to Marquette. It's kind of has things happening for the UP, which is a rather rural area. There's only 325,000 people who live here year round. That's in the whole Upper Peninsula. So all of the towns are super small with not that much to do. Marquette has a little bit more to do than some of the other towns we've stopped in, which is nice. One of the most famous activities is jumping off of Black Rock at Presque Isle. If you've watched our vlog for a while, you know that I am an avid jumper. Ain't no mountain too high. Actually, that's not true. There's definitely cliffs that are too high, but I, I do go for a good jump. And so when I heard that there's like a really great rock to jump off here into Lake Superior, I think I'm gonna give it a go. I'm a little nervous. We don't know where the rock to jump off is though, because the rocks that we're on right now are very shallow. It's not safe. So I think we have to walk around for a little to find the right one. I think we found it. Maybe it's where the huge crowd of people jumping off rocks are. That was so cold. It wasn't that high. I've jumped up higher in the Cenote, Mexico, but it was so cold. But I'm gonna do it again, because we need pictures. <sighs> that was really fun. If you are into jumping, I highly suggest it. The highest rock is very intimidating, but you can do it. So what you do after watching your wife jump off cliffs, come to the local farmer's market, and you get some pasture-raised pulled pork. No bun because we gluten free like that. We should try to be, we cheat a lot. The farmer's market is here two days a week during the summer. Wednesday night, they just do a two hour, kind of like a smaller version. Saturday is supposed to have a ton more vendors. And I love the selection here. They had great meats, vegetables, flowers for sale, and they had prepared food. So we tried the pulled pork and we also got a vegan taco using lion's mane mushroom. If you've been following us for a while, you also know that we get funky with some mushrooms. We love Four Sigmatic, which has different powders that you can add to your coffee or take as teas in the evening. Lion's Mane is one of them. It's very good for your brain. Memory. Lion's Mane Taco.
Mmm, really good. The sauce they put on top when they have pickled beets, excelente. If you're interested in learning more about Four Sigmatic and how we take our lion's mane mushrooms among others, we'll have a link in the description below and a discount code for you if you'd like to give them a try. All right, Marquette, you're small, but you're delivering on the health food. They have a local food co-op that was like an established health food store. It was pretty big and had a wide selection. They also, of course, have the farmer's market we just visited, but they also have this really awesome place called Lake Shore Depot. It is super small, but they have a huge selection and it's all locally sourced. They have things from Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan. They had high quality meats, fish. It was really great selection. So if you need to supplement and you're looking for health food like us, you're in store, which is, thank God, because before this, the pickings were slim. We could not be happier to be in this spot. We've been staying in established campgrounds, state parks, things that have full hookups. It's not because we're reliant on full hookups. We actually are self-sufficient. It's really that there's just not a ton of free camping in Michigan. Free camping and boondocking does exist. It's just not very abundant. And when there is free camping or boondocking spots, it's normally really far out in the woods, not close to anything we've been trying to see. So we've been paying for camping and our campground budget has been blown over the past six weeks. I will tell you that we've spent a lot camping. So this is why we are so excited to be here right now in the middle of a forest with like barely anyone around. We're at Bond Falls Campground, which is technically free. If you have a state park pass, it gets you in. But if you don't, you have to pay for that pass in order to camp here. So it can be free depending on your situation. For us, our state park pass has already paid for itself a long time ago. So we didn't have to pay anything to be here. There's no services, but the campgrounds are beautiful. It's first come, first serve. We drove in, we found a great spot, and we have internet connection. So we'll be here for the whole weekend, taking all the vibes in. And now, after finishing some work for the day, we're gonna go for a lovely little hike to Bond Falls. impressive these falls are gorgeous they're so much bigger than I was expecting super worth coming out here in the middle of the woods plus it's a bonus of free camp nearby and we saw an eagle legit so close to us it was epic I've never seen an eagle that close in the wild even if you're not gonna stay overnight at the campground this is super worth it come here walk the trail enjoy the falls Hopefully see a bald eagle. Got hit by a car, it looks like, or who knows, maybe a bird attacked it, but its wing is all messed up and it can't fly now. Yeah, if something, you know, sees it struggling, at least maybe you'll get eaten. Seeing nature play out its course but. is hard sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's tough watching something struggle. All in all, that was a great hike. Big reward for very little effort. It was only like 30 minutes from our campground. Sure. And if you can't do the trail down from the outpost, uh, there is a road that'll take you down to the bottom next to the scenic site. So you can just get out at the parking lot and there's a wheelchair ramp and everything. So it's totally ADA accessible, which is really nice. And now we're, we're a little bit hungry. I think if we're in for a campfire night and something tasty. As long as the mosquitoes don't carry us away. It's true, there's lots of mosquitoes out there. Like a lot. Well, a lot. There's more than we would like, but it's not as bad as Campeche after the storm. 
that's for sure. <laughs> that was bad. The next day, we made our way to the Keweenaw Peninsula, the northernmost part of Michigan, and one of the snowiest places in the United States, having a record cumulative snowfall of over 30 feet in the winter of 1978 to 79. The peninsula is known for its abundance in copper and played a huge role in the copper run in the mid 1800s. It's also one of the most remote places in Michigan, nestled on Lake Superior, the largest of the Great Lakes and the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. It's a new day. We're at a new state park in a new city. We came to Copper Harbor, which is one of the points where you can get to Isle Royal National Park. It is a very remote national park. It's one of the fewest visited in all of the national park system. It's supposed to be beautiful and epic. There's a lodge there. You can do backcountry camping. There's no motorized vehicles there. So it's supposed to be a very off the grid experience. We tried to go, but unfortunately it is a very popular experience this summer. So we're gonna hop on the scooter today. We're gonna explore the area. We won't be able to explore it as extensively as we may like, but we're gonna try and see as much as we can in our time here. Outside the town of Eagle Harbor is one of the area's most popular attractions, the Jam Pot, a local bakery and store selling wild berry jams and freshly baked goods made from local and regional organic ingredients. But the Jam Pot isn't special just for what it sells. It's unique because it's run and operated by the neighboring Byzantine Catholic Monastery, which calls the Keweenaw Peninsula home. I'm gonna have to take my shoes off in the shower. It happened again. We got stuck in the rain on the scooter. Last time this happened, we were in Calakmul in Mexico, coming back from a bat cave. When we left here, it was beautiful and sunny, and since we don't have very good reception here, we had no idea a huge storm was coming from Houghton Hancock, and it caught us by surprise. So while it was a bummer to get caught in the rain, we're soaking wet. It was still a fun little stopover. I think now we're gonna get dry, get cozied up, have a cup of tea, and watch some Harry Potter. Better. The sun is officially back out. I'm pretty sure the storm was over as soon as we got home. But it was still nice to have tea and our little treats we bought from the jam pot and watch Harry Potter. It was a nice afternoon. But we're gonna stretch our legs, go for a walk, try and see a little bit more of this area since our day ended a little bit earlier than we expected. From our campsite at Fort Wilkins State Park, it's just a short walk to the restored army outpost, which was originally built in 1844. The fort was established to help keep order on the peninsula between copper miners during the copper rush of the mid 1800s. It was also used, as they put it, to keep the peace with the native Anishinaabeg people that inhabited this area for thousands of years prior. In 1842, just two years before the fort was built, the Anishinaabeg were forced to cede 10 million more acres of the land now known as Michigan and Wisconsin with the LaPointe Treaty. Within a few months of the treaty signing, there were over 100 new mining rights claimed in the Keweenaw Peninsula, all for copper. The fort housed no more than 100 enlisted men and families at any given time, but had everything necessary for survival on the peninsula, including a hospital, emporium, and church. Today, visitors can see what it was like to live at Fort Wilkins in the 1800s. Given its remote location and brutal seasons, it was both a beautiful and challenging place to call home. The fort operated until 1870 when it was terminated as a military outpost with the decline in demand for copper. On your way to or from Copper Harbor, you'll pass through the town of Houghton Hancock, which is home to MIT. It's a college town. There's a mine here, Quincy Mine, that you can actually tour. We've had several people tell us it's a pretty cool experience. We don't have time for it this time, but we did pass by Peterson's Fish Market. We stopped in to stock up on some fresh fish, but they also have a restaurant here that is famous for their fish and chips. So we caved. 
we got an order to split. Our last stop at Michigan's Upper Peninsula is the Porcupine Mountains. This is a very remote area that borders Wisconsin. It's over 60,000 acres of wilderness to enjoy and explore. There's yurts, cabins, camping, backcountry camping dispersed throughout all of the 60,000 acres and it's positioned right next to Lake Superior so you can enjoy all of the beautiful lake views on the beach but you can also get a taste of wilderness and some of that just raw natural beauty. We made our way to Lake of the Clouds today. It was a very easy walk to an overlook that gives you these incredible views of the Lake of the Clouds. This is the most famous spot in all of the Porcupine Mountains. If you Google it, this is probably the picture that comes up and you can see why. It's truly breathtaking. All you see for miles is just nature, which is so cool. opposite side of the park about an hour's drive away is Presque Isle which is where several waterfalls and a river run straight into Lake Superior. It's a super beautiful area with tons of boardwalks and stairs throughout so that you can enjoy all the different vistas. It's definitely worth driving to to explore. There is a campground on this end as well that offers more primitive camping but beautiful RV parking spots. And it's just so serene over here listening to the water and seeing how it's kind of carved into this gorge, super cool. The beach is a little slice of paradise. We're just taking it all in. Then this is rock hunting. Petowski on the way up to the UP is known for its stones. And a lot of people go specifically there to hunt and enjoy. If you get them buffed, they can be really beautiful. But up in the UP, they also have special stones. And if you use a black light, you can find fluorescent rocks that glow under the black light that can be really cool different colors. We didn't have a black light, we just found this out very recently, so unfortunately we probably won't be able to participate in that activity, but if you're coming, that would be something cool to have and prepare for. Dennis is definitely vibing. I'm just laying in the sun, taking in all of the warmth because it's quite chilly today. With us being on the scooter, the breeze is pretty cold, so I'm happy to be in the sun, just listening to the waves. Michigan's UP was a welcomed retreat, a friendly reminder that people and places can surprise you when you let them. To stop and smell the flowers, go for that cold water swim, take a leap of faith, disconnect and unplug, and the chances are you'll be better for it. There was so much more we could have explored and we hope to see on our return. But for now, thank you, Michigan, for reminding us how to stay open and rekindling a sense of wild surprise in our travels. If you're interested in seeing more of our Michigan travels, watch our entire Michigan playlist. And head on over to Patreon, where you can gain access to our personalized map with some of our favorite eats, campgrounds, and must-see destinations throughout the state. Wow. <laughs> It's water, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not paddling at all. I never paddle. Life is more